what's his name? Where he said, she'll be fine. Well, we, we explained it to her, you know what I mean? You're going home. No matter what, you're going home. Okay. We're clear there? You've got to understand that. We're looking pretty healthy. I don't know if I helped these guys or not. No, I you're, you're getting there. Well, 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 I, I think it's hard for you to talk about some of that stuff. I would not want to talk about some well, of that stuff. Well, I just talked about it. Today. You know, uh, if but you these are just questions about what you think, what you've heard, what you know. And some of that is, have you heard anything like he's talked? Or his girlfriend has said something well, I don't understand. about Teresa gone by, or has he tried this in the past with another girl that we don't know about, besides your daughter and his daughter, and there been other girls that have kind of been lucky to get out of there? See what's going on here. Um, yeah. What's going on here, Earl, is there is a clear pattern of behavior. There is a clear pattern of sexual deviancy. There is a clear pattern of a man that can't control his sexual urges, desires, and it's a public thing. And not only that, it's a sociological flaw that's going on here, where somehow, some way, Stephen believes that what he's doing is proper. It's okay. But what's going on here? How could you? You, thinking clearly, understand that grabbing a 17-year-old girl that's your niece in the crotch area, even with her clothes on, is very, very wrong. Very wrong. Mm -hmm. Okay, but even your brother... 20, it would be very wrong. It's, it's, it's right. wrong, it's period. Wrong, no matter what. It's wrong. <clears throat> Plain and simple. Your brother, Stephen, is not coming home tonight. I can't stress that enough. You don't need to be worried about him showing up at your home tonight, or tomorrow, or the day after. Okay? And there's a reason why. But then there's got to be a reason why. Exactly. But I, you know, like I just told you. Knowing, knowing that we've told you that there's a reason why. We need to know, this is very important, because right now, this conversation we're having is the opportunity you have to tell it all. If we find out information from Stephen after tonight, or from Chuck after tonight, or from other, at this time, unknown persons after tonight, mm -hmm. and we need to come back and talk to you again, going to be an entirely different scenario. And you're not going to be walking out of the house. You're going to be getting carried out. And you're Probably. Going to be in handcuffs. <laughs> because Probably in we were, you got to understand, today we were very low key today. Yeah. We wanted to treat you as professional as we could because that's what's proper in a situation like this. Yeah. You're a witness that we want but to provide us information. I'm going to tell you the same thing I told my wife. This is my life. Uh, that business is all I got. Then you should not be crushing cars illegally. You should not be burning tires illegally. I if it's your way tires. of life, the bottom line is you own 50% of that business. And people are burning tires out there illegally, which means that you're very, very likely in a situation where you could potentially end up having your property seized okay. and forfeited. But the tires, if, if Steve was burning tires, that ain't our property. That's Roland Johnson's property. It is. I understand where you're going with that. But it's going on elsewhere, too, on your property. Cars being crushed. Some of those things not being documented properly. Well, we can go on and on. And you can we can go out there and go through your books right now, if you like, and do a, an audit and make sure that the taxes and everything are being paid the way they're supposed to be and that payroll is being handled the way it's supposed to be and oh let's not forget cash do you see where i'm going here yeah all right yeah, so let's cut the past that's what i'm saying i mean see, yeah, that's your whole life your, your whole, whole life, life could go on a turn of a dime 
they were to start going, looking through all this stuff, and they shut you down. Yeah. And they shut you down in your office. Now what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'd have to work the factory or something. Because that's the only thing I know. I've been doing it all my life. I was driving. I was driving that big old record. Plain and simple. Yeah. You know, I'm going to ask you a series of questions here, and all I want to hear out of you is a yes or a no. Okay? Okay. You understand that? Yes. Do you think your brother Stephen is a sexual deviant? Yes or no? Compared to what he do with my daughter, yes. Do you think your brother Oh, whoa, 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 back up. What is Stephen in? It's an individual that is into unusual and sometimes uh, abusive and inappropriate yes. types of sexual behavior outside the norm. What would be considered unnormal? I used to stay with him when he was here 18 years ago. When he used to beat on his wife, throw her against the wall. Mm -hmm. So, do you believe that your brother Stephen has knowledge of why Teresa Hallbach disappeared? Yes or no? How am I supposed to answer that? Yes or no? I don't know that question. <laughs> what you believe, do you think? Do you believe what do you believe? He has some knowledge about it. Do you believe that your brother, Stephen, has if he was, direct knowledge of why she disappeared? If he was the last one to see her... No. Yes or no? Do you or don't you? If he was the last one to see her, yes. I guess. I don't, I don't know how to answer that one. Do you think it's proper for your brother Stephen to have committed a heinous crime against this young woman, Teresa Hobach? No. And then try to blame it on one of your nephews? No. Do you think that's, that's not that's right? That's wrong. That's wrong. Mm -hmm. That would be wrong, yes. Did your brother Stephen at any time after Halloween night, Monday, October 31st of 2005, at any time hint to you, wink to you, suggest to you, whisper in your ear, or indicate that he had done something bad to Teresa Hallbach? No, that he didn't. Do you believe he talked about anything like that with your other brother Chuck? I would have to answer no because I don't know. Do you think your brother Chuck is capable of having been involved with the disappearance of Teresa Hallbach as well? With your brother Stephen? It could be, yes. I don't know. If your brother Chuck had direct knowledge of what Stephen did, would he try to help Stephen and remain silent and lie to law enforcement to help cover it up? Yes or no? I would have to say yes because he gets along with him better than I get along with him. <laughs> Stephen has given you has given you some information about him. Would you lie? No, I would not. I would tell you. I, I, I just don't have no reason to lie to you. I know he's my brother. He's my brother that doesn't never think right or anything. And you hit the nail right on the head. We don't think you're a bad person. We don't. We think your brother's a bad person. Well, if you think I'm a bad person. No, <laughs> no. If I did, I'd tell you. No, but if I did, I'd tell you. But I, I don't think you're a bad person. I try. To, I think you're being very helpful and cooperative to us right now. Well, that's what I thought when I was, you know, letting these people in the yard and let them walk around and everything. And, and, and then it blows up yeah. in my face. No, nothing's blowing up in your face. It's it did. It no. did. Three and a half hours. I sat down there. You know where she is. You know something about it. You know that was a, it. It wasn't meant for. Her. You know what I mean? But you, you got to understand where they're coming from, Earl. You are a co-owner. That was the a junk. Guys. That was a Manitowoc County. 
Well, okay. that is enough. <laughs> well, like we said, we are not Manitowoc County. You know, not us. Manitowoc County. You got to understand that you are co-owner of that junkyard. The vehicles found there. Other evidence has been found there. Then the career went down the drain. No, your career did not just go down the drain. Your career is at a crossroads. And it's contingent on you being honest and truthful and forthright with us and telling us the things that you've been holding back on. Been, you told me that earlier, but yet we had to drag out this information about how he's behaved with your daughter. There's a lot of detailed, hideous information like that that you have stored up here. Mm -hmm. Okay? You and I both know that. All right? Nothing is going to happen as far as your business crashing down on you or anything else unless you lie to us. If you withhold information, obstruct this investigation, and mislead us, we're going to do everything in our it's here, come out. Out. we're going to do everything in our power to make that known. It's going to come out. Did I, did I did I do it yet? I mean, did I? You're being very cooperative with us, but you're 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 doing it in a difficult way. You're <laughs> you're forcing us to ask a lot more questions than we should right. have to ask. Right. I know. I, That's why we're here. Yeah. That's why we're here right now. <laughs> we're still here. You know. Mm -hmm. Has he ever forced his way on your wife? No, not that I know. If he did, would you tell us? Yes, I would. Has your brother Chuck ever done something like that? What? Forced himself on your wife when you weren't around? Yes, he has. What's that all about? I don't know. What kind of brother does something like that? I don't know. <laughs> what, did, what did you do when that happened? Were you there? Hmm? Were you there or were you gone? I was gone for about 10 minutes. You're gone for 10 minutes? Excuse me. Oh, oh hi. Hi. I'm going to come in and steal some snacks if you have oh, any. Sorry. sorry, I didn't mean. I don't want anyone in here. No, that's fine. That's fine. A star sorry to be inconvenient. Uh, you know, I'm sorry for interrupting you guys for playing cards or something. No. <laughs> be nice if we were. <laughs> Some guys would be owing me some money. <laughs> I'll put a sign on the door next time. But these detailed tidbits of information are the things that we need to know because they are the little pieces of the puzzle that are going to have to come together for us. But you Your brother is doing this sort of thing. I find that very... Uh, if that were me, I think, and I were in your shoes, I don't know what I'd do. I, I think the anger would be immense. What did you do? What? Your brother Chuck, when he forced himself on your wife. When he forced well, himself on your wife and, you know, you're the same. through his back window of his house. He did. And, and throw him off the deck. Yeah. Then what? Away. Did he run? No. He laid there. Okay. I looked at him and I looked away and I walked away. I didn't give a shit if he was hurt or anything. But he wasn't hurt because he's still here. But why why are your brothers treating you like this? Um, but that was a long time. You think they're taking advantage of you because you're the nice one in the family? I don't know. But the, I, I, Do you think it's possible? I don't know. No. Do you think it's possible that bad people do bad things? Well, I guess so, yeah. Do you think your brother Stephen is a bad person? Huh? Do you think your brother Stephen is a bad person? Well, that's the thing. He can be a good person, and then he could be a bad person. Do you think he's... That's not a day. Do you think he's the bad person type that is capable of unspeakable acts of hurtfulness and violence against other people. What I see with his ex-wife, yes. Does he have a problem with women? I think he's got a problem with power and control. Does he feel like he has to be the dominant person when he's near women? Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Does he always have to direct the conversation when he's around women towards sex or sexual innuendo? Or can he carry on a conversation with a woman that's not related to sex? Sometimes. Sometimes, I guess. Do you think he's been abusive towards his girlfriend, Julie, that's in jail right now? Yeah, I've seen him one or two times already, yeah. One or two times what? What did he do? Uh, grabbing her by the hair, throwing her down to the ground, kicking her. Why did he do that? She was drunk and she couldn't walk. And he was mad because of that? Yeah, and he wanted to go home. Where did this occur? Up north. Right in front of my uh, cabin. Oh, and Krivitz? Yes. When did that happen? When he first met, I think, around now. I don't when? know how long they've been going on. This year? Huh? This year? I can't remember if it was this year or not. So when they first met, it was about the time it happened? Yeah, because she came back. They came back the, the next day. They went home for a five old Johnson's house there. And they, I don't know if she drank a little bit more or something, and they got into it again. And then uh, she called the cops, or the cops pulled them over. And then he went to, down to the jail for questioning on it. Okay. Have you been in Stevens' residence since he got out of prison? Since mm -hmm. he moved into Roy Johnson's place, or even when he had his little ice shank for his trailer? Yeah. Have sure. you ever seen pornographic material on that? Yeah. Does he keep photos of young children or nude women? No, or not that I know. Are I, you mean, I was always, well, in the house there, I was always in the kitchen. With when he first got out, we had a party down there. Maybe three times we had like a fry out or something down there. So we were always in the the kitchen and the living room. And it was you never saw always anything clean. You know, it was always clean. It was always clean. Never saw anything inappropriate lying around. No, no, sex it was, toys it was or, nice. It yeah. was, no, I was surprised. You ever talk, <laughs> did he ever talk about with you uh, communicating on the computer in chat rooms mm -hmm. or sending email to other people? Over the internet? I didn't think he was. Uh, is he that computer savvy? Is he capable of doing those sorts of things? That's what I mean. I don't think he is. He's not that smart? He's, no, he's kind of slow like me. You know, a little he's slow. A little slower than me, I guess. Yes. But if your brother did do something hurtful, violent, and harmful to Teresa Halbach, do you think he would ever admit to it and tell the truth? No, probably not. Why not? Because he's just that way. What's that way? What does he that mean? Keeps it to himself. Keeps to himself. What does that mean to you? Well, it was just like, just like the night when I told you about. It. They came home the next day and then mm -hmm. they got in an argument mm -hmm. or whatever and then the cops took them. Right. He didn't even he didn't even talk about it. It was all her fault. He blamed it all on her? Yeah. She did she did something to cause him to have to grab her by the hair and throw her down. Drank a uh, glass of vodka. Okay. So he felt that he was I gave him the reason. <laughs> doing what he felt was right. Yeah. Okay. So, which I didn't agree on, but I just walked away. Was your father that way when you were growing up? What do you mean? Was he, was your father the disciplinarian type where he would, yeah. if you did something wrong, grab you, throw you down, hit you? Straight I mean, or was he just the type that would yell at you? Or would he spank you? Or? He would holler. He always hollers. He still hollers. Okay. You know, he's always got to raise his voice. This is this next question I'm going to ask you is a difficult question. If you don't want to answer, you don't have to. Okay. Some of these things we're talking about are very sensitive and, and they're they're uneasy to talk about. But 
Was your father ever sexually inappropriate or abusive with you or any of your brothers or your sister? No, not that I know. I know he sometimes drank a lot and threw things around the house when he'd come home from the tavern or something, but he had a violent temper. But no, I've never seen nothing like that. Okay. You gotta remember this guy got he spent eighteen years in prison already too, and that ain't no easy ride either. You might say that's a There's a reason why it's not an easy ride. Right. But that's I mean, where bad people go that have done right. bad things. Right. And they still do bad things when they're in there. Well, that's neither here nor there. That's not why we're here right now. Right. right. Anything else before we conclude here? Is there anything else that you can share with us about your brother Stephen as it relates to Teresa Holbach about what you might know that might help us determine exactly what happened to her? Whatever. See, that, that time frame in there was difficult for me because I wasn't really around him that much before. You know, when it happened and from the last time we went to the auction. I have, I have one final question. I was out of town that whole weekend. I have one final question for you, and then I'll uh, open up the, uh, the questions here. Your brother Stephen's property is the attached garage and the area behind his home, mainly the area back where his dog is. Does he ever burn things or have a fire pit back there? Does he ever bury things back there? Does he ever use that area for anything? I can tell you this much. In the mornings and that, sometimes he brings up some rims, uh -huh. burnt rims, right, and puts them on a pile put some on our iron pile or uh -huh. our rim school. I can tell you that much. But for, for burning at night, I'm never usually there. And if I'm there, I'm by my ma for a little while, and then we we'll leave, you know. If he has a burn barrel in his front yard, on the oh, other side of the road. Oh, sometimes I see it smoking. Yeah. Yeah. What reason would he have to burn stuff in his backyard or in his garage if he has a burn barrel in the front yard? I don't know. He was lately talking about that's an important what reason would he have? Do you, do you know? Or brushing that, I guess. And that's what he was talking about recently, is that the line fence behind his trailer, that he's, he told Jocks or Doctor or whatever that he would take that all down or whatever and get rid of the mess. And he was talking about burning it all by him. I know, I know that much. I don't know if that's got anything to do with anything. I don't know if he burned some already from over there because there is two piles in the field the last time I seen it and there was some wood cut there. I don't know if he was working in there or not. I don't have any other questions right now. Gary, do you have any other questions? You said you took a golf cart out on Tuesday or Wednesday of that week. So I asked my mother about it the second time mm -hmm. and she said that she was pretty sure it was Wednesday night. Okay. I never talked to Bob and Bob never called me ever since this ever happened. Was there a five-gallon pail in that golf cart? Or was there any buckets in that golf cart? I can't, I can't answer that. I don't know because we, we walked up and their garage door was open and the key we're in the golf cart and I told Bob, I said, go walk and let's take that. And my mom was in the kind of like in our new office and we just got out of his back and, you know, for Bob. Okay. Like we were screwing around stealing it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I didn't, I didn't really pay attention to what we had in the back. Is there stuff in there generally in the back? Well, my mom usually, yeah. You can make a phone call. Yeah. For my mom, usually it was a, just something that's picked stuff up with it in the yard, or she weeds her garden and so with it, with, it, with a pail and stuff. Yeah. Alright. So there's usually a pail with it or something? Yeah. Or with a five gallon pail? Or there's a five gallon pail, or. Is it a white five gallon? Yeah. 
But she's got a high speed there too that she uses a lot too. Okay. Yeah. Um, what else about that time? I mean, you're driving on Wednesday. You check with your mom, you know, on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. You went down into the yard, basically. Oh, Did you see anything in the yard that's in particular? Oh, and you know, and the thing was, Wednesday night, we pulled, you know where Steve's burning barrel is, right? When we got down from in the, in the, in the bottom and everything, we drove around slow and seen, seen if we see any rabbits hopping around. We didn't see nothing. So then we went up and I said to Bob, I said, let's check that. See, when I told you I seen that, uh, them two brush piles on the other side of Stephen. Mm -hmm. I said, well, why don't you take a ride down there and check them brush piles? Okay. But then it was getting really, you know, darker. Um, we pulled up to Steve's burning barrel there and we were going to drive around. He was outside. Steve was outside. He was standing there looking at his phone bill. I don't know what he was doing. But he was standing there by himself. Looking at his phone bill. Yeah. And then my brother threw a smart comment at him, you know, because he's got a squiggle and my brother's got a Polaris. My brother-in-law's got a Polaris. And then he come over by him and he talked to Bob and gave him a little shit. But that was, that was it. Then we went down, you know, and checked some brush piles and then we went back through. And we're, that's the only ride that did consist of, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But anything out of the ordinary, no, I didn't. That's what I don't understand. And all of a sudden, Saturday, this thing appears. Well, how was that there when I was just through there? Wednesday, she's missing Monday. It don't make any sense. Somebody put it there. It wasn't there. And I ain't, I'm not losing my mind. You know, it was just easy. It was parked right in the middle of the road, you know. Let's go outside and I'll see if uh, there's somebody here that can give you a ride over you, can, uh, you got a cell phone on you, we can call, we'll call, 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 call Candy, maybe she'll pick you up here.